Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to look at using Phoenix FD to create some liquids that are going to pour from our wine bottle uh, over into our wine glass. Now in this scene what we have is a wine bottle and a wine glass, and if I scrub the timeline here, you'll see we have an animation of the wine pouring. This is actually pretty important. If you don't have a well-timed out animation like we have here, then you can run into uh, you know issues with your simulation. It's kind of like when you're skinning a character. If you don't have your bones uh, deforming or moving in the proper way, your skin is always going to turn out poorly. So in this case, we have a pretty good animation where the liquid can kind of pour out, and then we have a little drop there so that we can get some good simulation out of that. Right now in this scene, we have three objects. We have our bottle object. Uh, we have an object that is going to contain the wine. So the wine emitter object, which is this cylinder inside the bottle, and we have our wine glass. I'm just going to switch into the perspective view and zoom out a little bit. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our Phoenix simulator. So we'll go to Create Geometry, and from the drop down here I'm going to choose Phoenix FD, drag out a simulator. So I'm going to click and drag around the base of the bottle and up towards the top. And then I'll go over to the Modify panel, and under the Grid section, I'll set some parameters here. So we'll set 17 by 17 by 70. And I'm just going to align this grid to the bottle, so that I know that I have good coverage of the bottle, and everything's kind of equidistant. I'll need to move it down so that it's at the base. Now, over here you can see that there is a good gap between the top of the bottle and the top of the grid. And when we're planning to do this animation, uh, what we'll do is, of course, link this grid to the bottle. And as we play this back, uh, you'll see that we'll definitely want grid coverage right here where the liquid is going to pour out. So it'll be important to set our grid size for that. Now the next thing that we'll create is our source. So I'm going to go to Create helpers and choose Phoenix FD and from here we could choose Phoenix FD source or we're going to choose actually Phoenix liquid which is kind of a shortcut for a liquid source. We'll drag out our liquid source which is this little faucet here. We're going to add in our emitter node. From here I'll click on add and I'll go and add that wine emitter object. So this is just a cylinder, and there's a couple important things about this cylinder. Let me go into the front view here, and we'll select that cylinder. And you can see here that that cylinder kind of uh, meets up against the edge. It doesn't go outside of the edge of the bottle, uh, but in this case, it's going between the uh, side of the bottle. And that's important, that there's some good penetration inside the uh, seam of the bottle or the glass that's actually there. If this is kind of too small, what will happen is the liquid will all settle into place and we'll have to do a little bit more simulation uh, in the beginning to kind of pre-simulate what's going on. The next thing we're going to want to set is our discharge for our source. So right now it's going to discharge um, 50 units over uh, the entire frame range, which is not what we want. We want this to kind of fill up and then settle into place. So I'm going to turn on Auto Key, and I'm going to go to frame 2 and set the discharge to 0. Then at frame 0, we'll set the discharge to 200. So now this will animate between a discharge of 200 and 0, and we won't get any new um, liquid anywhere after frame 2. We we'll want to make sure that brush mode is chosen here. That'll be the default, but it's important when we're trying to simulate from a emitter object like this that's going to fill the object as opposed to emit from the surface. Next we'll go back to the simulator and set a few parameters. I'm going to turn off Auto Key, and in the Modify panel uh, we're going to have to set this to be a liquid simulation, so I'm going to enable liquids and we're also going to go down into interaction. Now normally what you might do is we have an exclude list here and that means it's going to take into account all of the objects in the scene. When you're doing what we're doing here which is we're going to use two grids to pass 
from uh, one grid to the next, you may want to choose an include list so you can just get all the objects that you want specifically. So I'm going to click on add and choose that source, the bottle, and finally the wine emitter. And all those will be in my include list. Before I go ahead and simulate this, I'm just going to select that emitter and I'm going to go over and ask it to display as a box so it'll be easier to see the fluid as it comes out. And I'm also going to go and set our preview to maybe a 1.5 which will show us a little bit more of that liquid that's coming out. Now if I go and simulate right now we'll probably run into a few different issues. Let's click on start and the first thing you can see is that the liquid simulates very fast but it completely drains out right away. And There's a couple of reasons for this. Uh, the first reason is that if I just zoom in here, you can see the size of the wall of the object that we're simulating with, and you can see the size of the cells that are there. It's important that you have at least two cell coverage, so one, two of these cells, uh, within the walls. Otherwise, it will have a problem and it may drain out like we're seeing here. So we want to go over to our grid, and we want to adjust the cell size. So I'm going to say something about 0.4 and I'm going to click start. So this is much better but we're still getting some issues with the volume kind of compressing um, and it kind of seems like it's draining out so we'll definitely have to set some different parameters there. Those are parameters that we're going to set in dynamics. So I'm going to scroll down to dynamics. For this type of fluid what we want to do is choose a smooth conservation and we'll keep the quality at 30 and let's just check this out. So we'll go back up, click on start, and you can see that does a lot better about simulating. It keeps the volume fairly well. It's a bit splashy, but we'll be able to edit that momentarily. Let me go to the perspective view, and let's go back to dynamics. The next thing that I want to set is the material transfer and set that method to forward transfer. Forward transfer is going to allow the liquid to be a little bit smoother if it's moving um, and that's always a good option to choose if you have flowing liquid is the forward transfer method. The other thing we're going to check under liquids so that this keeps together a little bit better is strong surface mode. So I'm going to turn on strong surface mode there and then we'll simulate again. Click on start and it kind of settles into, into place. Uh, it doesn't quite splash quite as much, uh, but we do have a little bit of a volume loss, and most of that is because of the quality, and that's the quality of the forward transfer. So I'm going to go down into Dynamics, and you can see that steps per frame is set to 2. We're going to set that to 8, and that will give us much better quality and a much stronger uh, surface that will keep its volume. I'm also going to uncheck this option for the vorticity um, and that will help us be a little bit less splashy. Alright, so we should be pretty close here. I'm going to click on start and you can see our volume settles into place. It holds its volume. It's not super splashy and we can go through the animation and simulate it all the way through. So I'll just pause the recording while this simulates. So I'm going to stop this a little bit uh, the way through because this won't be our final sim. But we can kind of look at the animation that we have here and it's looking pretty good. We have the water or the wine fill up and then it starts to pour out. We get some nice splashing and kind of take a look at what's going on here. You can also go into preview and ask it to show the mesh so that we can see the mesh that's in uh, that's being created by the liquid and we can even do an isolate here and that'll give us a good preview of kind of what's going on there. Now this is pretty low res um, but it's a good thing to be able to uh, set your cell size and do some quick iterative passes uh, on this and this is actually before we go to the final res what I wanted to look at. So I'll turn off that mesh option and now that we've set the parameters for the dynamics and the liquid 
Uh, I'd actually like to look at taking this and doing iterative passes on it so that we can do some uh, quick simulations because you never know exactly uh, what you want to get out of your animation and sometimes you may need to uh, do some simulations over and over. In this case, uh, you're definitely going to want to bring your cell size up. And as we talked about before, um, we can probably get away with maybe a 0.5 here and start that out and you can see this will kind of settle into place nicely we'll bump it up to uh, 0.65 and click start and you can see we start to get some volume loss there now if we want to use this and we still want to get some sort of uh, quick feedback from it um, you can always go in and use a push modifier to increase the wall size so on this I'm going to increase the wall size. This won't be what I'm going to have for the end result, but this is going to help me to do kind of quicker simulations and turn around iterative results. So when I increase that wall size, you can see that I can use that 0.6 or maybe even 0.7 simulation and I can get a better idea of how the liquid might move. Now of course it's going to be a much lower resolution liquid um, and it's not going to have all the detail and flows and eddies that you might get out of a more uh, detailed liquid but um, you know it can be important to be able to simulate this stuff fast and see exactly how your liquid is flowing so we can see this kind of go through and at least this will give us a general idea of the volume of the liquid the arc that it's pouring out um, its velocity and things like that. And velocity is the next thing that I actually want to talk about. So I'm going to click on stop and we want to make sure um, by default velocity is not something that's output from the simulator but that's something we're going to need to output if we're going to pass the simulation from one object to another. So we want to make sure that we have velocity checked here. And then I'm going to set this to um, probably not my final, but close to final cell size. So we'll go up to the grid and let's set this down to maybe a 0.3 or a uh, 0.2. I'll go with 0.25. And we'll use this before we go to a real fine detail. Again, refining the detail as we go um, so that we can get as fast a simulation time as possible and still see the general result that's happening. So I'll go ahead and simulate this. We'll click on start. Now that our simulation is complete at a little higher resolution, we can see that we have our liquid uh, settling in the bottle, pouring out, some kind of waves going in there, and then it's splashing back and settling into place, which is what we want. We do want to make sure that we have some good coverage here when the liquid comes out and we can put in a grid to continue on this liquid and have it pouring into the glass after that. If I just go up to the tools menu, grab viewport, I can play a animation preview and that way we can get some quick feedback on how the liquid is flowing and if it's working to our liking. For, for right now it's working pretty well. Okay so in the next video what we're going to do is uh, set up our uh, simulator for the glass and pass the simulation from the bottle into the glass um, so that we can have uh, this liquid flowing into the glass and filling up. Thank you very much.